but we are in a double bind all the time. Absolutely, yes. Um, and, 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 I, and I certainly was in making the movie, and I was perfectly aware that I was selling a beautiful opera of, of war, when at the same time, you know, I pretend to advocate, I mean, what he without saying so says is, don't publish any of these photographs, you know, just state the facts and report on it, not in headlines, but elsewhere, and just let the focus of the world go elsewhere, and maybe that's a way to, anyhow, we're in, in utopia here. But we all feel that we come to a point where it really can't go on. I mean, is the, I, mean I, 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 don't, I don't even open the television anymore. I don't want to see the next pictures. I don't want to. I, you know, I feel, <laughs> and that's 25 years later, so I just wait till you've got 25 years on this your back. This is a good what, 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 I mean, for it. Yeah. How, how can you go <laughs> on from there? And yet, in order to catch an audience, you have to improve on more sophisticated violence, more sophisticated visuals. And, that, that, and, that, and strange that. enough, we are getting them. But that's only a And so we are in an, in, in an unbearable situation where we are, uh, we are creating hell. <laughs> well, we never had reportages of wars for the last uh, for 500 years in the same way that you're talking about war being reported now and maybe being unreported. Well, they, they were not the means and they could control it better. But there was still the war. It was better than ours, yeah. It was better than war. Okay, Mahmoud, um, I think my question will answer your, your question. Uh, I, I don't want to go to the stereotyping of a country once again. In fact, this is one of the least stereotyping films I've ever seen. But to me, this film is about Germany, its violence, and the war in, inside the hearts and minds of the German people, in the midst of the beautiful setting. My question is, does the West make its war outside its countries? Well, it's had, it has been said. Uh, first of all, while, while you were watching this movie, I was watching Mahmoud's movie, and I have to make you a great compliment. I think it's, uh, it's an amazing uh, sketch for a movie. It's not yet the movie. Keep it in the box and work on it in, in a few years. I think you're sitting on gold. It's unbelievable. I mean, especially the man on the leash. Uh, ever since you made the movie, it's taken an entirely new meaning which we can't help looking in. I mean, some of you have seen this film. Um, and uh, the man kind of turning voluntarily in the dark, into the dark, in Beirut, Lebanon today. So, um, yes, uh, I never, uh, well, I mean, we were very clear. We won't pretend, you know, that we can represent any of the factions, and especially not of Lebanese people's feelings. We talk about these foreigners who get there, and the French, as uh, Jean Carmet has his point of view, and uh, Anna Shigula has her point of view, and he has his point of view, and if you say, in a sense, it, it's been said, we've pacified our societies, and now our need for violence, uh, we have it staged elsewhere, and then we can consume it uh, without uh, dirty hands. Uh, sounds, uh, I mean, it sounds like a brilliant idea. I don't, I don't really see any one of us actually uh, working on exporting our needs for violence into third world uh, war. You export wars. everything else, violence, yeah. violence. Yeah. Uh, certainly we fabricate the guns and the ammunition and we provide them. That's That's right. And the That's means right. to fight the war, I mean the, the, the financial means to fight the war. I mean, you know that in Beirut, the entire city was destroyed except for one quarter of the city, which we didn't show, it wasn't our purpose, which was where all the banks were. You know, Saudi Arabia, the Libyan, the uh, Chase Manhattan, and, 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 and huge, wonderful glass buildings, everything else around destroyed. Because all the different fighting factions, toward the end of the month, there was uh, a three days kind of trev, uh, armistice, and they all went to get their check, to cash their checks, and then the fight started again. So, in fact, uh, this war, and any Lebanese uh, would say, 
it would say we had to fight it, but it wasn't our war. It who was actually fighting there was, of course, the, the Syrians, the Palestinians, uh, the different interests in the East and the West, and we still had the Cold War then, so you had money coming from Moscow, and hence you had immediately coming money from Washington, and from Gaddafi, and, and the Maronites, uh, some from Israel, and so on. So, in fact, uh, you, you Right, it was a war by representation somehow, Stellvertreterkrieg. Certain conflicts were fought there. Okay, no, no, I cannot. Okay, I will make three more questions, okay? First, Professor Shan was the was first, and NJ, and uh, okay. You? Um, why do you want him to go back to his wife at the end? Is there some sort of morality or you want a good ending? It doesn't look like a happy ending to me. I mean, the thing is, where, where would he go to, you know? <laughs> uh, uh, he's not the kind of guy who would really stay on uh, like Hanashikula, and so he's crawling back home, uh, which is understandable, but uh, the way she looks at him, it, doesn't look like a happy ending to me. I think she feels that there is some kind of a war raging within him and he better comes to terms with that before they can go on living together. Okay, and she? Well, I'd like to pick up on that. I think that whenever you're in a war zone, there already is within you a, a war going on. And um, I'm talking from my own experience of several different war zones. But um, the thing that I find problematic, particularly today, if you're in a place like Bosnia, or if you're in Iraq, or, or in Colombia, or wherever, is that the use of the image is detached from the story so often. And a lot of times, the person who wants to, who has the eyes for the story, is not even reporting the real story that's going on. So my question, my, well, my, my sense is, is, is that by presenting a fictional piece, there's a greater chance of telling the truth than by sometime what is going on with documentary right now. I mean, not even documentary, even news. Because I find it really, it's verging, not verging, it's a part of a lie that's happening. And I've been really, that's why I'm not doing that anymore. But it's really, I think it's much more important to like tell a story rather than present an image that has no meaning to it. Um, we're, we've even debased the whole sense of Guernica, which says so much about war. And it was not, I mean, and that was a, a terrible beauty. But now, the images, we look at them and we have no, no feeling toward them. And even the body, the face of the body disappears. The body disappears itself. So that's why I'm thinking what you're doing and presented in a fictional way has a bit much deeper power than it does than when I look at a television set. Because I too can't look at TV right now. It's, it's too depressing. What, uh, you know, uh, this is for me a long time ago. I, if I had the courage to watch it, I would have been sitting with you. Uh, it, it seemed a good idea at the time to do it this way. Today, I don't have an opinion about it. Uh, but I do have an opinion about what I see on television, and I hate it. 